show that the center of mass of a thin uniform wire in the shape of a semicircular arc of center C and radius simple A is at a distance to A divided by pi from C. Right. Okay, center of gravity of a thin uniform semicircular arc we need to find. Okay, now thin uniform semicircular arc. Yeah, it is a uh, like this. You see, we have a semicircular arc. That arc we place its center is at the origin and it is symmetrical about its axis like this. The center C of the arc at the origin. Types. You see, we get the same circle arc. Okay. Right now, first we have to write the way you place this same circle arc on the right side. For example, play. first we will do the diagram. Right. Now uh, we select a small element like this a small plinth on the arc CPQ. When we join this P and Q to the center C, the angle between the two lines is very small angle, and this CP line makes an angle theta in any clockwise with the x axis, and this small angle. Is very small value of d theta. Rain is given as equal simple a. This rain is simple a. Right. Now we have to find out the mass of this small element pq and position of its center of gravity. Then applying the definition of the center of gravity. We can take the center of gravity of this. Right. So, first draw this down, and then we must try first the way you place this over xy or some plane. Thereafter, we have tried the way you select the element. Thereafter, we find the mass of the element. Distance from y axis to the that means distance from y axis to the center of gravity of the selected element PQ. Thereafter, we use what the definition of center of gravity and we can take the answer through integration. Right now, yeah. Then write down like this. Uh, write down like this. Let's place The semicircular arc, let's place the semicircular arc symmetrical about x axis symmetrical about x axis such that
its center C, its center C, is at the origin O, on the O x y horizontal plane. Right, start from the line. Due to symmetry, about x axis, due to symmetry about x axis, the center of gravity. of the semicircular arc of the semicircular arc lies on the x axis lies on the x axis start from new line Consider a small element, consider a small element PQ. which makes an angle theta with the x axis and subtending and subtending with small angle d theta Very small angle d theta at the center capital C. Right. Now, uh, before we find what mass of this detail, then right. you can write mass of. The element P. We write mass as M I. M I. The length you can write d times d theta. Rho. They are here. Write the meaning of rho. Rho is bigger. Mass per unit k. You must write this one. Mass per Unique. Right. Next one, uh, distance of center of gravity. Distance of center of gravity to this P2 element from my axis. A uh, paper is P and Q, two points are very close points. The two points P and Q almost the same. Then this P2 element is like a point. Its center of gravity lies from the Point. So that perpendicular, the distance from y x is going to be distinct by proper perpendicular from here. This length from y axis to center of gravity of the peak element. There, this d theta with small angle we can neglect. And then this is a cos theta. Now you can write distance of center of gravity center of gravity from y axis. From y axis. 
So I take this as equal to x y. I can write that one as a cos theta. X y is a cos theta. Now you can reduce the definition of the center of gravity. Hmm. I can write by you know the definition x bar sigma m my x i i going from 1 up to n divided by sigma m my this way. Right now I am going to substitute. The sigma we replace by the integration m i is a d theta rho and x i is a cos theta. And the denominator sigma m i a d theta rho. Now the equation limit. This kind of uh, this kind of p2 variables we get from this edge, this end to what? This end. When we bring this p2 element uh, to this end, we call this theta come into for zero and then we used to turn clockwise the theta negative. Finally, when it comes onto this negative y-axis, the theta will be minus pi by two. And when it comes to here to take this last element, theta will be plus pi by two. Okay, so therefore the integration limit is going to be minus pi by two to plus pi by two. And right here, minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. Right. Now, we can cancel out the constants. This a and rho, we can cancel down. This a you can take out. Right. Once you take the a out, there we have cos theta dt minus pi by rho 2 plus pi by 2 denominator minus pi by 2 2 plus pi by 2 1 times theta. You know, integral of cos theta is equal to its sin theta. Sin theta minus pi by 2 2 Plus pi by two. This is theta. Minus pi by two two. Plus pi by two. Now we have substituted the upper limit and lower limit. Right? We got to get here. It's y equals d times. When I put upper limit here, we get sine pi by two minus lower limit sine minus pi by two. And the denominator pi by 2 minus minus pi by 2. This minus sign of the angle we can take out. This sine pi by 2 sine 90 is 1. Right? Here we will take minus sign out. We get sine 90 is also 1. Here pi by 2 plus pi by 2 is nothing but pi. So therefore, here we get x by plus 2 divided by 5. The first answer. Huh? Right? So then we must find the answer finally. Therefore, center of gravity of the same circular arc lies on its axis of symmetry at a distance 2a upon pi from c. That we have completely called the final answer. Right? Now, we can come to the next part. Read the question. The question given like this. In the attending figure, PQ, PR and ST are three straight line pieces 
cut from a thin uniform wire of mass rope by unit length. The two pieces PQ and PR are welded to each other at the point P and then welded to ST at the points Q and R. It is given that PQ, PR, simple A, ST, 2A and PO, A by 2. Where O is the midpoint of both QR and ST. Also, SUT is a semicircular arc of center O and radius simple A made up of a thin uniform wire of mass k rho per unit length, where k positive is a constant. The rigid plane wire frame capital L shown in the figure has been made by welding the semicircular wire SUT to the wire ST in the plane of PQR at the points S and T. Show that the center of mass of capital L is at a distance 4k plus 5k plus 3 divided by 5k plus 4 times a by 2 from P. Yeah. So now here we have composite object. Right? So then we have drawn the, the composite object on the wave side of the plane symmetrically about the x-axis, right? So as to find the center of gravity, the distance asking from P. So therefore, the best way of placing this on the wave side plane is symmetrical about the x-axis. P is at the origin. Right? That will be placed this. Okay, right now. Now we will be draw this one. We can do it here. This point is O. This is P. This point is S. This is Q. This is R. This is P. This link is P by 2. This is it. This is the y axis. ST length equalness 2A is the midpoint. They are for this thing. Is simple A. Uh, people now here which is 90. The same if I take as theta, then the source theta because these two triangles are convent triangles. Convent triangles. Right? Okay. Then uh, here we can write cos theta. Cos theta can write the adjacent divided by the. Hypotenuse 
then calculate this and this. We get cos theta as half theta is pi by 3. Theta is pi by 3. And the theta is pi by 3. Right. Okay. Now, uh, people again will have to write the way you keep this object on the xy plane. Okay, uh, right. Right, friends. Let's place the object symmetrically about the x axis. With the point P, with the point P, at the origin O, on the O x y horizontal plane, on the O x y horizontal plane. Now, given this uh, object consisting of how many parts? This PR, this PQ, and this ST, and this semicircular arc. 1, 2, 3, 4. By the combination of this O only, finally the composite object is formed. Then, in our table, we have to include this. All five objects. Right. Now we'll prepare the table. Right. I write this one. Here object mass distance from y axis. We have to construct this table definitely. Right. I will write one by one. The linear density of this curved path given as k rho, that of this tree given as four. Right. First one we draw here. PR object. PR part. Its mass. Length is A. Mass per unit length is 4. Then A rho, the mass. Right. It's a road people. It's a road. It's a road people lies at the midpoint. But this time we need the distance from y axis. Is the length we need from here to here a by two. Then the length we need is from here to here. This length only we need a by two cos sixty. A by two cos sixty. Theta is sixty two. A by two cos sixty means a by two. A divided by two cos sixty is half. Then a by two come. Right because similar in this uh, PQ. P to part. Also the same length. A rho, the distance is P by 4. Next one we'll take is ST. ST part. The length is 2A, therefore the mass is 2A rho. And the distance to center of gravity form y axis is the length this, it is a by 2. 
The next one is people, the same circle will arc this way. It, its uh, rate is given as A. Then its length is I times A, same circumference, I times A. And should not be by the linear density, unit. The length in the mass per unit length is given as KO. In uh, I times A KO. And people, it's a uh, center of gravity, like somewhere here. In the here part, now we proved the distance to center of gravity from this O is 2A by 5. But we need that distance from Y axis. This is A by 2. This is now 2a by 5. Then we get a by 2 plus 2a by 5. Then people finally the composite object is. Its mass is going to be the sum of these all masses. Then here we get to a rho, a rho, a rho, four a rho, plus i times a k rho. Then when I take a rho out, we will. Right here we get four plus here five times k. Its center of gravity only people we don't know. It has taken as x naught. Now, to find this x bar, what we do is we take moments around y axis for the whole object. So, what is here behind taking the moments? The whole composite object is formed with these four objects this one, this one, this pn, semicircular arc. The object is placed on the y axis horizontal plane. So then if I consider our y-axis sense are uh, these people, right? So then the whole object is on the right hand side of my axis. Then uh, by these four set objects, the moments come in about y-axis, but this way, clockwise moment. Then the sum of the moments of these four objects about y-axis should be equal to moment of the whole object, concept object about my axis. That is the theory we take in the moments. Hmm. So now using that you can take what is x bar. Now you can write taking moments about y axis. Take a moment about y axis. This is right. A rho, A rho. Right. People, when you take moment, it should be a force now. Here we have mass. We we'll multiply by G. A rho G into A by 2. By this. By this one, also people. The same moment, same moment coming. Therefore, I have not this by two. And by this plus two a rho into a by by this five times a a rho. Times a by two plus two a by five. This is the with sum of the moments of this four objects. That should be equal to equal. The moment of this composite object it is equal to 
t times rho o plus i times t takes one. Now we can simplify this. Right. Once you simplify this, you get this answer. Take down rho. Here. Because here also we have to put that g because uh, the masses we have put here, we have to put g. They also g. They also because we have to put g, right? I write that g here. Because the moment is taken by force form, mass into g is the weight, weight is the force, right? Now we can cancel down here. A rho g, A rho g here, and here A rho g, A rho g. Right. Now we can simplify this. Now that this 2 and this 4 you can cancel down. This 2 and this 2 you can cancel down. Now when you simplify and subject takes power, you get this answer. Right. Let's simplify this. We get this answer. Then this gives us careful simplified statement. We get this answer. X bar equals I times k or k plus 3 I k plus 4 times k by 2 coming. This is the answer asking in the question. It's from P. Right. Let me what? Another one is given there. The wireframe L is in equilibrium with its uh, circular part touching a smooth vertical wall, smooth vertical wall, and a horizontal ground rough enough to Prevent slipping and its plane perpendicular to the wall as shown in the adjoining figure. Mark the forces acting on L and show that simple k greater than 1 upon 4. Yeah. Right people. Then I guess this all. So now we will draw this diagram. We have draw the diagram and asking mark to the mark to all forces. Right. So now So that people
Tak by si viděl. Right. Right. You know, is that your diagram? This point is S, T, P. And this point is goodness. The object doesn't slip. Right. So then, people, if it slips, you can be very understand. This can slip. This point to move rightly away from the wall. Then you know the friction is acting in the left word towards the wall like this. Is a frictional force. Now we are, we are given that is in limiting equilibrium moment. Right. And the normal reaction acting here that is perpendicular to the ground. See, yes, that passes through the point O. Right, because this is sensor plant. No? And this wall is a smooth one. We are given the wall is smooth. Wall is a uh, smooth one, smooth vertical wall. Then from their point of contact, only normal reaction coming. That is perpendicular to the wall, right? Passing through the point O. Say this is R, right? Now people. Here, for this SN if friction force and the normal reaction. Now I can consider the resulting force of that if and is. Right? Now, if I consider the resulting force of this if and is here, like this. Okay, people? Leave. I can draw this that line like this. Right. Then number of forces acting on the object is 2. What are the two forces? This R and this result of F and S. Another force is acting. What is that? The weight of the object. Finally, the object is in equilibrium under the action of three forces. People, you know, when an object is in equilibrium under the action of three forces, the three forces must meet at a point. So, already the two forces, Rn, the result of this if and is, they meet here. Therefore, definitely, the line of action of the weight should pass through that point of intersection of that R and the result of, result of the fairness. So therefore, the line of action of weight, if I draw here, that should pass through point this. 
in order to pass the light on spectrum of the rate produced through the point this deeper, definitely the center of gravity should lie here. Right? That means definitely the center of gravity should be between O and U. Right? So then uh, people we found the distance to the center of gravity from P here as the x bar. Since the center of gravity in order to keep the equilibrium in this in this manner, people that length from P to this G should definitely be greater than this length A by two. Okay. Otherwise, we can't keep this object in equilibrium in this manner. Why? If the center of gravity people lies between O and P. The two forces, this R and this resultant, they meet here. If the center of gravity is in between O and P, no chance of them to meet at the point. So, therefore, the three forces never meet in the point. Therefore, the equilibrium of the object in this manner is not possible. So, therefore, we are given another inequality. We are given another inequality, right, to show. For that one, what we do is we use the center of gravity should lie between O and U, that fact we use. Therefore, the distance from P to the center of gravity G, we found that it has x bar, should be greater than this A by 2. By that only, the inequality uh, coming to the question, the answer. Right? Okay. Uh, uh, then write down like this. Write down like this. In order to Keep the equilibrium of the object in the above manner. The center of gravity of the object, the center of gravity of the object. should lie between O and U O and U that is P G Length should be greater than P O length. Right. P G length is the people that we found the X bar. The last answer of the question. Right. So that we can substitute there. But their length by K plus O K plus 3 divided by by K plus 4. P2 A by 2, greater than this PO is A by 2. You can cancel down these two. Use the cross multiplication. Pi K plus, OK K plus 3, greater than Pi K plus 4. This Pi K and this can cancel down. Bring to the right hand side. Then it's a bit K. K becomes 1 upon 4. K greater than 1 upon 4 coming. That answer. Right? Yeah. That's okay. Right. Now, people, we are given another one. What's that? That is this. Now, let K equals 1. Even now, by this answer, we have to understand something. If this K greater than 1 upon 4, on the number line, if I mark the 0 here, 1 upon 4 here. If this k takes any value greater than 1 upon 4, for any value of k which is greater than 1 upon 4, the center of gravity lies between 
O N U. Now we are given k equals 1. We are given k equals 1. Is k no? Then is the interval of this on this k value lies. So that says for k equals 1, definitely the center of gravity of this object lies between O and U. Lies between O and U. Okay. Then when k equals 1, we can find the distance to the center of gravity. Hmm. Distance to the center of gravity. From this people, point B. Ah, then we can start to write lines. Right. When k equals 1, you know the center of gravity we found x bar. That is known. x bar is pi times k. 4k plus 3 divided by 5 times k plus 4 k by 2 no? right now I am going to put here people k equals 1 we are going to put k equals 1 here thereby you can find this x bar the distance of the center of gravity from what we from the point P. Okay, so then we get x bar when I put k equals 1 there. What do you get here? 4 plus 3 is 7, here 5. x bar come in here 5 plus 7 divided by 5 plus 4 times 3 by 2. This will be it. Right. The distance, right? Now we are given another part in it. But that let k equals 1. The equilibrium is maintained in the above position even after the particle of mass m is attached to L at the point P. So that simple m less than 3 to A. Alright. Now the question is this table. We place a particle of mass equal in here, right? And the weight of the object acting at the center of gravity. Now, when k equals 1, the distance to center of gravity g from p is this. Now, what happens is this here we have a weight mg, it's a force, here we have weight w of the object, that two are vertical forces, parallel forces. They act in the same direction vertical downwards. For these two forces people, there is a resultant force. And that resultant force, it sizes the people, the whole weight. And that resultant force acts at a point on the line joining P and G. Okay, that is the point where the whole weight acts. People, in order to keep this object in this manner, again, that point of action of the resultant force of weight simple weight G and weight capital W of this object, that point of action of the resultant force, again, people should lie between O and U. Between O and U. Otherwise, in this way, in this form, in this manner, the object cannot be kept in equilibrium. So now let's find the point of action of the resultant force of that mg and this weight of the object. And after finding that position, that position should lie between O and U on the axis. Then you can convert this answer. Right, people? Okay. Now I can take it like this. Now I am drawing this, the line, here P and this is E and here we have O, right, here we have now people weight, you can find
find the weight of the whole object when k equals 1. You can remember the total weight we found, right? There are three objects in it, okay? There are four objects in it, right? In that four objects, we found people this one, this one, this one, and this one. That total weight is acting at the point G. Here, point B is in B. Right. The total weight you know, this part is zero, zero, this is two zero. Then uh, the to be the four zero, the mass now. And this one, what we have? It's i times a k no. But k is what we have? Uh, k is what one. Then we get here when I take the total weight put in k equals one, we get here it is a rho times. O plus five. Right. The total mass is there. Then the weight going to be you are not by g. Okay. So therefore, we get the total weight here. I plus four. A rho g. It is acting through the center of gravity. The distance we have found. It is this x bar, this sounds. Right. Now, people, I am going to consider the resultant of this mg and this force acting somewhere here. I will mark that point as g dash. This is the point where the resultant of these two forces act. The resultant force is equal to sum of these two weights. And we know this g dash divides this small line in the ratio of equal. This mg comes to this length. This is coming to our this length. This we learned in Cochrane forces lesson. Okay? Then we can write gg dash is to pg dash ratio mg is to pi plus 4 times zero g. Right. And then you can write that one gg dash divided by pg dash is it is mg divided by pi plus 4 times a of e. Then this gn, this g can cancel down. Then gt dash divided by pt dash. You can write it for m on. 5 plus 4 times a. Right. Now, people, can we find Right, now we will find this pt dash length. Right, can you tell me how to find this pt dash length? The ratio we know. Okay? The ratio we know. 
Then how write PD dash length? This PD dash length you can write. How big? This whole length takes one. Okay? I read that graphical here. This PG dash length you can write. Right? PG dash length you can write. Okay? The whole length from here to here, x bar, we divide by the sum of the ratios, that means this plus this. m plus 5 plus 4, 0. And to find the length pg dash, this should be multiplied by the corresponding ratio value 5 plus 4 times 0 e. Zero, no? Actually not uh, yeah, zero time. 5 plus 4 times 0. Right. Now people, this length pg dash. Definitely this g dash should be in between O and U. So therefore, this point if I take as our O, this is A by U. Therefore, this P G dash length should be greater than this A by U for this equal view. Right? Now we can substitute for this P G dash and simplify. You get this answer. You get this answer. Right? Yeah. X bar. Right, that one. I can substitute here now. 5 plus 4. 0. This one I wrote. Divided by M plus. 5 plus 4, 0. Hmm. And x bar is this answer. 5 plus 7 divided by 5 plus 4. A by 2. I know. 5 plus 4, 0 divided by 8 plus 5 plus 4, 0 into x bar. 5 plus 7 divided by 5 plus 4 8 by 2 should be greater than a by 2. Then simplify this. You get this answer. You get this answer. Right? Okay, now this a by 2, you can cancel down with this a by 2. And this 5 plus 4, you can cancel down with this 5 plus 4. Then here we get 5 plus 7, 0. Right. You can use the cross multiplication to add the same. Greater than M plus 5 plus 4, 0. I'll bring this to the side. And take a o out by plus seven. Wants to be wants to be this this left hand side minus five minus four. Here simple in 
this can this you can cancel down, then we get m smaller than 7 minus 4, 3, a, 4. This is how we take this answer. This is how we take this answer. Right? Okay. Yeah, this is a very recent past paper, question paper. 